Kyle, we have to start with this. We're in the garden. How big of a Knicks fan are you? I mean, like, it feels like it's got to be part of the Villanova blood at this point. I, I have to be honest. Where I'm a definitely a, a, a New York Knicks fan right now, uh, or Nova Knicks, is that uh, we, we like to call it on the main line. Uh, having uh, three of our former guys on that team right now, uh, it, it's amazing to watch. How cool is it for the program to have all of them on the same team and that people continually talk about what they did in college? No, nah, it's amazing. Uh, just knowing all three of those guys and knowing what they've uh, been through to get there uh, and, you know, the fact that knowing how close they are and what they accomplished together, uh, it's special. I don't know if there's uh, any – I don't know if this has ever happened before. I don't know the exact stats on that, but uh, knowing that these guys competed together for most of their college careers, um, had great success, and now are doing the same thing in the NBA is, is pretty cool to watch. And during those runs and those championship teams, there was such a focus on Villanova basketball, what a Villanova basketball player is. And I know that's something that has continued since from Coach Wright to you. So describe that. What is a Villanova basketball player? I think it's someone who just goes into a game and is trying to do whatever they can to win. Uh, and I think that our guys uh, compete at the highest level no matter what, no matter what role they're in, um, no matter if they're you know, the starter, the star coming off the bench. Um, they're just out there trying to compete for every second um, that they have out there on the court. So it's year three for you. What have you learned over the first two years of Villanova? I think that when you're a coach, you learn in dog years. Um, and, you know, each season for a coach, I think, is like really five years in real time. You have so many different experiences. Uh, and me, myself, as, as a younger coach, um, I don't think there's any way uh, to predict or be 100% prepared for things that are going to happen. You kind of got to go through it. So um, I'm, I'm really actually thankful for all the experiences um, that, that we've had as a staff so far in these um, first couple of years. And I'm excited to, um, for this third year um, to go after it again. What's been the best and the hardest part about following a Hall of Famer? Um, uh, I think one of the things uh, that I, I, I always have to do is have questions like that um, and just having to always answer the question of what it's like to be come after Coach Wright, what would Coach Wright do, et cetera. Um, obviously, I get it, um, but truly speaking, in my actual life and life as a coach, we, I, we really don't think about it much as a staff or talk about it um, because there's so much to do on a daily basis between recruiting, um, you know, alumni events, coaching our team. Um, while you're in it, you're just going after it, attacking each day, trying to get better, trying to make sure our program's operating at the highest possible level. But uh, I do understand um, what Coach Wright uh, means, continues to mean to our university and what he's accomplished in the game of basketball. Um, so I think it's an honor. Um, to be uh, in any way affiliated with his namesake. Does he like give you space? Does he text? Does he call? Like, what's that <laughs> dynamic? I'm, I try to uh, conversate with him as much as possible. Uh, same when I was assistant. Sometimes he's just off the reserve doing his own thing. He's at the shore somewhere. Uh, he's at the shore. <laughs> he's playing golf. Um, I think he uh, retired for a reason. I think he wants his personal space. So we, we try to uh, leave him as long as much as possible. But anytime he's around, um, there's a buzz uh, in the gym or uh, the, the cinema or wherever he is. Um, and, and we love having him back. Um, and, and trying to learn, just as when I was an assistant, I try to learn from him uh, as much as I possibly can. He's just a special, special human being. So what is it going to take for, for this team this year to get back to the NCAA tournament? Um, I, I think for us, we just got to worry about stacking days uh, and being the best we can each day um, and, and try to be the best team we can be by the end of the season. Um, and, you know, everyone has a goal. Uh, at the beginning of the season. I think everyone in the Big East is tr trying to win a national championship, trying to win a Big East championship. Um, and I, I think that's a, a, a real goal for everyone in our league. Um, yeah, but I don't think you get anything for having the goal. You have to go out and do it. Um, and you have to actually um, put in the work. And, and that's what we're focused on right now. It feels like this era of college basketball, there's always impact transfers on every team. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the new guys on this roster and what you expect from them? Yeah, the, the transfers uh, for us uh, have been really good. Um, yeah, I do think it's a, uh, it's a, it's a hard thing uh, going and playing a couple years in one spot and then having to leave when leaving and having to learn an entirely different way uh, of playing basketball, literally. Um, and uh, to our guys' credit, um, with uh, Jamir Brickus, who came to us from LaSalle, um, he, he's been uh, amazing. He's been a, you know, the consummate point guard. He does literally everything on the floor, um, you know, down to posting up at his size. 
Uh, he's a great passer, great shooter, great decision maker. Uh, Wooga Poplar um, is a guy who's come to us from Miami. Um, he's a guy that's been to a Final Four, that's been a starter, and has um, had great success um, as well on um, his own right. And he, he's very versatile. Um, I, I didn't realize how athletic he was coming in. Um, and then he's a, he's a great shooter as well. Um, so he's another a great piece for us. Um, and then Enoch, um, big Enoch, is someone uh, that we haven't had um, you know, during my tenure. And, and I don't even remember the last time. You think you got to go back to maybe Amari Spellman uh, or really Daniel Ochefu, the last time we had um, like a guy with that size. Um, and um, his size really impacts the game. Um, but he's also a good basketball player. He talks. Um, you know, he's, a, he's a great mind and a great teammate. Um, so I think he'll impact us, um, impact our team for sure. Uh, you mentioned being younger. How, how does that help in this era of college basketball when you're trying to build those connections kind of on the fly each year? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think that you know the the best thing in recruiting is creating genuine relationships, uh, and you know being a, a younger guy and a guy that's um, really, really honestly, I'm, I'm starting to feel older as as I go here. Um, but maybe being younger than some of my other uh, counterparts, I, I definitely look at it as an advantage. Um, just in having time to, to create those genuine relationships um, with each, each of our student athletes, uh, spending time with them on and off the floor, uh, really getting to know who they and their, their families are as people and, and bonding with them. So when we have to coach them um, and coach them a little hard sometimes, um, they respond the right way.